Hey guys, welcome to YS Kong Driving. Yes, this is it. This is the Tesla Model Y. Actually, there's a story behind the names of Tesla models. They have the S, they have the 3, they have the X, and this is the Y. So you put them all together, S3, X, Y. That's Elon Musk's way of saying these are sexy cars. Okay, so the Model Y is actually an SUV. Although when you look at it, it's going to be very hard to picture it as an SUV because it's just slightly higher than the sedan. But yes, it is. It is higher and it is built tougher. Okay, so as far as the Model Y is concerned, they actually have three variants. The lower spec, which is just single motor and rear wheel drive, will cost you 199,000 ringgit and that is in base form. The next one is the long range, which actually has dual motor and that will set you back 248,000 ringgit. And this one is the top of the range, which is also a dual motor but more powerful motor and it costs you 288,000 ringgit for the base model. It has 527 horsepower and 660 newton meters of torque, 0 to 100, 3.7 seconds. And this is a car that's going to upset a lot of people when we take it up Genting, especially if you have any supercars around. Not many supercars can match this 0 to 100 speed. And top speed is a bit better than most electric cars that we know. This one can go 250 kilometers per hour. In terms of size, the Model Y is actually quite big. It is 2129mm wide, 4751mm long, and 1.624. It's just a little bit shorter than me, but it has a lower ground clearance than the standard model, only 157mm, because it is lowered suspension. So for an SUV, 157mm is considered low. Wheelbase is 2890, so this is actually a D-segment car, although it may be slightly smaller than the normal D-segment because there's very little overhang at the front and also very little overhang at the back. But I'll tell you why. They, it's the Model Y. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but I'll tell you why. Because they actually need the space in between the wheels for the center part. The batteries are all at the bottom of the car, so they need to keep the wheels as far apart as possible so that they can put the batteries in and enough batteries to last you 515 kilometers because that's the range of this car. Okay, let's take a look at the car. Of course, these are LED lights and the front of the car is, well, I think Tesla started the trend for electric cars to have this dolphin or fish type of nose that has no grill. Yes, of course, there is some intake here for the air, but electric motors don't need so much cooling. And so for aerodynamic purposes, they make this front very blank. And this is the kind of shape that everybody has been following. So there are many other electric car brands, but they all started using this type of front. So you can say that Tesla is the pioneer. But this is the look for the Model Y. And of course, right in the center, this is Tesla. Okay, moving to the side. It's a very hot day, I'm sorry. Uh, we have, for the performance model, you have 21 inch wheels. They are big. Size is 255 35 series R21. And these are Pirelli P0s. Brakes are huge. That looks like a four-pot caliper. It's a Tesla branded. And only the performance version gets these brakes. The front suspension looks like it's double wishbone and it's made of aluminium. So I also see inside a lot of aluminium parts used to keep the weight low. Even then, this car has a weight of two tons. Just about a couple of kilos under two tons. So it's a two ton car. And uh, along the sides, you have a four door configuration and door handles are sunken inside. We'll look at that later. And moving to the back, 
you also have ventilated this at the back with what looks like two pot calipers and yes it's a multi-link configuration and I see also a lot of aluminium being used so at the back again you get the Tesla emblem and I think these are the only two emblems you see you get a little carbon fiber spoiler and this is only available for the performance model and of course down here it tells you it's dual motor this is what tells everybody that this is an all-wheel drive vehicle the overall shape is like that of a coupe and because it's an SUV it is higher of course electric car must have electric uh, boot opening and wow it's quite a big boot so this one looks very continental and a lot of cars are like this but because it opens all the way to the back here like a lift back version you can actually put in quite a lot of luggage so over here we have a little button and let's see what happens whoa electrical uh, lowering of the seat and you have lots and lots of space so ikea no problem let's see ah very good they have a little latch for you to open this cover and there's absolutely nothing in here except a little if the front is called a frunk the back should be called a brunk right no it's called a boot <laughs> there's a little storage cubby hole here and it's good enough to put quite a few gold bars ah look at that very clever you don't have to hold it up and if you want it to go down you push and there you are just a simple mechanism no real mechanism but they had a little ledge here and it goes like that very smart tesla okay so that's the back end and there are two speakers up here and there you go how to get into the tesla well actually there's a key recognizing pad here you put your key here but we already opened the car because it's very very hot but to open the door handle let me tell you something this is a car built for right handers only as a left hander it's very hard to push but for a right hander you put your thumb here and there you are you open the door so even if you're a left hander it's better to use your right hand because it's not rocket science you can use your right hand to open and it's very convenient so let's get inside the car okay so here we are getting into the car i see two pedals i'm going to close the door because it's hot outside there and electrical controls for both driver and co-driver and the car is simplicity itself so the dashboard looks like it's uh, good for two directions but actually it's not there's slight differences but it's like very uniform very simple dashboard looks like wood but maybe not be wood and then you have plastic so this car is totally vegan so even the seats even though they look like leather they are actually artificial leather or leatherette so most of the controls are your foot you have the brake and the accelerator and then you have one big screen this is a 15 inch screen and most of the controls are here except for one or two here a little roller button here your gear lever is here this is your signal and your wiper and that's about it so everything else you want to control your aircon la your uh, adas features la your driving features whatever you want is all here okay so down here you have two charging pads for wireless charging but you got to make sure your phone can fit here huh? some of the phones nowadays are getting so big they can't go in there properly and this one is a little cubby hole for you to put your stuff that you want to put in and at the back here you have another cubby hole with a power socket and two USB C's inside other than that the car is very very simple and up here you have a panoramic glass roof it's a hot day and it's actually quite hot so we've been told that most people will tint the glass up here to cut off more of the light because Malaysia is a very hot country 
Okay, this is the default screen you get when you get into the car and this includes your navigation and also a view of the car it tells you if your boot is open the bonnet is open and all that and uh, when you drive you can see the road here and things that are around the road but a very quick thing uh, the aircon controls are here so you just press the button and you can do the speed and also temperature for temperature it's very easy you just press here and slide, you can get the temperature colder or hotter. And your defrost buttons are here, your seat heater is here, and that's about it. And also at the left hand side, the passenger also gets to have his own uh, temperature controls. And of course, there's also an aircon louver at the back. So, other than that, you press this car picture here, and you can have your controls here. And the ones that matter is pedal and steering. So you can have acceleration, chill or sport, steering mode, comfort, standard or sport. So that will just uh, determine the hard, uh, harshness of this, or rather the feel of the steering. Uh, whether you want it more heavy or light, then you have also track mode and you can customize. So you can customize, for example, if you want Gunting, so what I've done is I've programmed in a setting for Gunting. So when I'm on Gunting, I will have 35 in front, 65 at the back. Stability assist is off and the rest of it is not so important. But you can set it up and then to get back here on the standard setting, there also you can do your navigation here. You can also look at the autopilot. At autopilot, you can it has certain options for you to set your presets for autopilot. And uh, we are not going to use autopilot, but uh, it, autopilot is basically adaptive cruise control. And for long journeys, it's very good because it does help you to steer, keep your car in the lane, and your hand must be on the this part of the steering wheel because here's where the sensors are. The car must sense that you are there holding the steering wheel. If you lift it off, after a while, lights will start flashing and if you don't react, the autopilot will cease to function. It will just shut off, yeah? So you have to be careful. Uh, they made it purposely like that because by law, they have to let you control the car. Of course, there is an, a real, uh, what do you call, self-drive version. That's 32,000 ringgit. I'm not sure about the legality, but it's available and it's 32,000 and I think there are some laws regarding that you cannot activate until it becomes legal in the country. Okay, Autopilot works with the ADA system to keep you safe on the road and also includes stop and go uh, in traffic jams so it's very very useful there and the ADA systems uh, include the forward collision warning and mitigation, uh, blind spot monitor, lane departure warning and also lane keep to do the steering height and reach you must go to controls and glove box window lock child lock fold your mirrors mirrors steering press the steering you use the left uh, up to adjust your steering column up it goes up down it goes down and left it brings your steering closer right it brings your steering further away and of course if you program it to your name this is a setting that will be on memory in the car so if uh, somebody else were to have another key get into the car and that key will be programmed to that person and it will automatically set all your settings to that person of course this is not a new feature many cars have that your radio your aircon your seating position all your preferences will be saved under your profile and the car will act accordingly so in terms of other things there's nothing really much to talk about in case you're wondering where the aircon louvers they are actually inside here in between the top and bottom and uh, at this moment, I'm very happy they have an auto aircon because it is a hot day. So the new Model 3 has got the driving uh, function here where you, you push up and down to get a uh, reverse or drive and park. But 
the model Y still has the old-fashioned stick here, which I actually like. And uh, there's no handbrake, everything is auto. Charging uh, on a high capacity charger, you can get from 15% to 80% in 15 minutes uh, or less. And for full charge, you can get it done within about half an hour to 40 minutes. Lah. That's what I was told. So this car has no range issues. 515 kilometers is a lot. We now have 81% and later we're going to go up Genting. Uh, with this 80 over percent, by the time we get to the BHP station, it will be 70 plus and we will get up to the top and this car actually has a feature where you can plot your journey and it will tell you what will be your remaining charge when you get to your destination of course that's based on estimation of the speed and all they have not tested YS Kong driving style so the number will mean not so much maybe at the top I will tell you how much uh, fuel we get left or rather charge we get left but normally it takes about 30% of the charge to get up uh, to the top of Genting but this is a very high performance model so we don't know but I think there should be enough range for us to survive so other than that you have your phone connectivity Bluetooth and also there is a dash cam right there's a dash cam and this can record your driving. In fact, there are also cameras on the sides and in sentry mode, yeah, that means when you park your car, the cameras turn on and it detects movements and records things about things that are happening around your car. So that's that's just about it for the car. 288,000, very powerful. We are just waiting for the next phase where we drive it up, you can think. To get in and out of the car, there are two methods. This is the preferred method, which is the door switch. You just press it and the door opens. And if that doesn't happen, you have an emergency mechanical lever. Yeah. So here we go. And the door opens. Okay, let's get into the back seat. Very nice. This seat is adjusted to my normal driving position and I have plenty of room that's about 12 inches uh, 11 inches of leg room and if that is not enough you can put your feet under the seat and there's a big space here so Michael Chin will fit inside here very well aircon louvers at the back two USB-C ports of course the glass roof extends all the way to the back what's this ah little coat hanger I Cannot imagine hanging my frag with out here, but well, if you got no place to hang, it's okay lah. Otherwise, you can put it on the floor. And the seat here is 60-40 split. Of course, this is leatherette again. You see your isofix points here. And you have a center partition, armrest with two drink holders. And this is the seat. Okay, you notice here there's a bit of difference here. This is the reclining. This is for straight seat for those people who like to sit straight a uh, back problem and then the reclining i think you get maybe about four or five degrees i'm not sure how many degrees but you can also enjoy the back seat a little bit so in terms of space it's not an issue and headroom is quite adequate yeah except here maybe the roof part uh, this part of the frame but if you sit up straight If you sit up straight, you will have that much more headroom and if you're very tall and you want to slouch a bit, yeah, then you can move a bit forward. Uh, this is a bit closer to the head, but generally, uh, space is not a problem. So guys, that's our quick walk around for the Tesla Model Y performance and keep a lookout for our video going up Genting because that's going to be very interesting. Imagine 3.7 seconds, 0 to 100. And if you are interested in a test drive, you can actually go to the Tesla website and schedule your test drive for yourself. And there are two locations right now that you can do your test drive in. One is at Cyberjaya at the Tesla Experience Center and the other one is at Pavilion Damansara.